Agents of Erosion Part 1 We have seen that the landforms on the surface of Earth are the products of exogenous external processes. Of the exogenous processes, we have studied the process of weathering in the last chapter. In this and the following chapter, we shall study processes like erosion, transportation and deposition. Erosion means wearing of the rocks. This wearing takes place due to friction and scraping. The movement of wind, water and ice causes friction with the rocks. This leads to the erosion of rocks. Therefore, wind, rivers, glaciers, sea waves and ground water are called agents of erosion. The work of wind river and glacier is controlled by the climate of the region. Sea waves and groundwater work in the region wherever they exist. Wind, river and glacier are in the gaseous, liquid and solid form respectively. In other words, there is a difference in the density of the matter forming these agents of erosion. The velocities at which these agents move also differ considerably. Hence, their ability to work also differs. As a result, we find differences in the landform produced by them. Through erosion and transportation, the cover of the rocks on the surface of the earth keeps on getting removed. Hence, these processes are together referred to as processes of denudation. In this chapter, we shall study the work of river, wind and glaciers. The River Some of the rainwater falling into the ground seeps through it and some gets evaporated. The remaining water starts flowing along the slope of the land. From higher ground to lower ground, such flows of water are named rills, gullies, streams, rivers, etc. depending on their volume of water. The work of the river. The intensity of the work of a river depends on factors like the slope of the land, velocity of the flow, types of rocks, discharge in the river and the amount of load. Erosion. The beds of the river as well as its banks are cut by the speedily flowing stream of water as well as the load moving with it. Moreover, the sand, stone, etc. in the flow also break as they collide. The following landforms are formed due to these processes of erosion. Gorge In mountainous areas, a river flows with a great speed. Therefore, the bed of the river gets eroded more than its banks. This gives rise to a gorge that has steep banks and a narrow bed. See figure 9.1. For example, the gorges of the river Vaitarna in Thani district and the river Ulhas in Raigar district. V-shaped valley. Over a period of time, the amount of load in the flow starts increasing. More and more energy of the river gets consumed in the transporting the material. As a result, there is less erosion of the bed. However, the erosion along the banks and the slopes of the valley increases. Hence, the slopes recede and the valley with near vertical sides become wider resembling the letter V. See figure 9.2. You will find numerous V-shaped valleys in the Western Ghats. Potholes. At times, the rocks in the river bed have joints. Stones and pebbles get trapped in such joints. Due to stream of water, this trapped material starts moving in circular manner. 
This leads to the formation of depression at such place. Such depressions are called potholes. See figure 9.3. In the bay of river Kukri at Nikoj in Ahmadnagar district and in the bay of river Indrayani at Begdewadi in Pune district, such potholes are formed on a large scale. Waterfall Water flowing over a hilly region at times cascades down a cliff. This gives rise to the formation of a waterfall. In some areas where the hard and soft rocks lie next to each other, the soft rocks get eroded faster than the hard ones. This leads to a difference in the height along the river bed and a waterfall is formed. At the bottom of the waterfall, plunge pools are formed. Garsapa falls at the Sharvari river and Duadhar falls on the Narmada river in our country are famous. Transportation and Deposition The load transported by glaciers is called moraine. The amount of moraine is higher towards the base and the banks of a glacier. Later, after the ice is converted into water, one finds that larger and coarser moraines are deposited at shorter distances and the finer moraine is carried over a longer distance. The following landforms are formed by the depositional work of glaciers. See figure 9.10. Moraine The following types of moraine are identified according to the location. Ground moraine is the material deposited at the base of the glacier. Lateral moraine is the material deposited along the banks of a glacier. Medial moraine is found in the central part of the glacier after the confluence of two glaciers. It is formed out of the side moraine of the inner banks of the two glaciers. Terminal moraine is at the end where a glacier turns into a stream of water. The water flow cannot carry the material brought by the glaciers. Hence, the moraine is found in a huge quantity at this location. As this moraine is found at the terminal part of a glacier, it is called terminal moraine. Drumlins Huge leaps of ground moraines deposited in the form of egg-shaped hills are called drumlins. This feature is found in the Northern Ireland and North European Plains. Eskers At times, the moraine gets deposited in the form of long, winding, narrow hills with steep slopes. These are called eskers. The Wind The work of wind is predominantly found in the hot desert and semi-arid regions. Following are the characteristics of these regions. Hot deserts are generally found close to the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. The mean annual rainfall in the hot deserts is 250 mm or less. As the evaporation is higher than the rainfall, the availability of water is low. Due to low rainfall, the vegetal cover is negligible. Lack of obstacles makes the work of wind effective. Like other agents of erosion, wind also performs the work of erosion, transportation and deposition. Meanders and Oxbow Lakes When the amount of load in the flow increases considerably, the river fails to transport all the material. Small elevated portion or obstacles can cause a change in the direction of the flow. Under such conditions, the bank of the river towards which the flow is directed, outer bank, gets eroded and the opposite bank, inner bank, experiences deposition. Thus, wherever the river changes its direction, 
erosion takes place along the outer bank and deposition takes place along the inner bank. If these conditions occur again and again, the river develops a zigzag path. Such a zigzag path is called a main during path, course, and each loop along the path is called a meander. When the turns in the course become acute, the limbs of a turn come very close. During flood, as the force of water increases, the river skips the meandering path and flows a straight path. The abundant portion of the loop develops into a lake that is called an oxbow lake. In the North Indian plains, the river Ganga and its tributaries have developed numerous such lakes. In the state of Assam also, many such lakes have been formed by the river Brahmaputra. Flood levees and flood plains Along the banks of rivers, Deposition leads to the formation of flood plains and flood levees. During the floods, finer materials are moved away from the banks, whereas the coarser material gets settled at the bank itself. On either sides of the river, plains are formed due to the deposition of materials. Such plains are called flood plains. The elevation along the bank increases due to the deposition of coarser material. This gives rise to hillock-like forms parallel to river banks. These are called flood levees. Such flood plains and levees can be seen in the flood-prone areas of the river Ganga. Delta When the river flows into the sea, the sea waves offer resistance to the flow of river water. As a result, the load brought by the river gets deposited at the mouth of the river. This leads to the formation of obstacles in the flow and, as a result, the water gets bifurcated into a number of channels. These channels are called distributaries. The deposition leads to the formation of a plane in the shape of a triangle. It is called a delta region. Extensive deltas have been formed along the mouths of the rivers Ganga, Godavari and Kaveri. The glacier in the high latitude areas and the areas of high elevation precipitation is in the form of snowfall. Over a period of time, the accumulated snow turns into ice. As a result of pressure, the accumulated ice starts moving in a direction of the slope. Such a flow of ice moving in the direction of slope is called a glacier. See figure 9.8. As the ice moving in a glacier is in the solid state, its velocity is very low. The thickness of the accumulated ice, the temperature and the slope of the land are the factors that determine the velocity of a glacier. Glaciers also perform the work of erosion, transportation and deposition. Erosion Wind carries sand, pebbles, etc. As they strike and scratch the rocks, they are elevated and basal parts of the rocks get eroded. At times, sand particles are lifted due to the forceful winds and are carried over long distances. Due to these processes, the following landforms are formed. Deflation hollows. The sand in the hot deserts is lifted and carried away over long distances by the wind. A depression is formed in the area from where the sand is carried away. Such depressions are called deflation hollows. See figure 9.11 The Quattara depression in Egypt is formed in this way. You have read about it in the 7th standard. 
the depth of this depression is 133 meters below the sea level. Transportation and Deposition The load transported by glaciers is called moraine. The amount of moraine is higher towards the base and the banks of a glacier. Later, after the ice is converted into water, one finds that larger and coarser moraines are deposited at shorter distances and the finer moraine is carried over a longer distance. The following landforms are formed by the depositional work of glaciers. See figure 9.10. Moraine The following types of moraine are identified according to the location. Ground moraine is the material deposited at the base of the glacier. Lateral moraine is the material deposited along the banks of a glacier. Medial moraine is found in the central part of the glacier after the confluence of two glaciers. It is formed out of the side moraine of the inner banks of the two glaciers. Terminal moraine is at the end where a glacier turns into a stream of water. The water flow cannot carry the material brought by the glaciers. Hence, the moraine is found in a huge quantity at this location. As this moraine is found at the terminal part of a glacier, it is called terminal moraine. Drumlins Huge leaps of ground moraines deposited in the form of egg-shaped hills are called drumlins. This feature is found in the Northern Ireland and North European plains. Eskers At times, the moraine gets deposited in the form of long, winding, narrow hills with steep slopes. These are called eskers. The Wind The work of wind is predominantly found in the hot desert and semi-arid regions. Following are the characteristics of these regions. Hot deserts are generally found close to the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. The mean annual rainfall in the hot deserts is 250 mm or less. As the evaporation is higher than the rainfall, the availability of water is low. Due to low rainfall, the vegetal cover is negligible. Lack of obstacles makes the work of wind effective. Like other agents of erosion, wind also performs the work of erosion, transportation and deposition. Erosion Wind carries sand, pebbles, etc. As they strike and scratch the rocks, they are elevated and basal parts of the rocks get eroded. At times, sand particles are lifted due to the forceful winds and are carried over long distances. Due to these processes, the following landforms are formed. Deflation hollows The sand in the hot deserts is lifted and carried away over long distances by the wind. A depression is formed in the area from where the sand is carried away. Such depressions are called deflation hollows. See figure 9.11 The Quattara depression in Egypt is formed in this way. You have read about it in the 7th standard. The depth of this depression is 133 meters below the sea level. Mushroom Rock the high rising rocks in the path of the wind are attacked by the sand that moves with the wind. The particles moving along the ground are larger but their velocities are low. The particles at medium height are smaller but their velocities are high. Hence, they have a greater impact. As a result, the portion of the rock at medium height are eroded more and the rock as a whole gets the shape of a mushroom. Therefore, these rocks are called mushroom rocks. 
या डांग्स द सॉफ्टर रॉक्स एक्सपोज ऑन द सर्फेस आर इरोडेड टू अ कंसिडरेबल एक्सटेंट बाय द सैंड पार्टिकल्स मूविंग विद द विंड द हार्डर रॉक्स प्रेजेंट इन बिटवीन आर इरोडेड टू अ लेसर एक्सटेंट The eroded portions of softer rocks appear like elongated troughs and the harder rocks appear as elevated portions. This landform is called yardang. Transportation and deposition. A large amount of sand is carried away by the wind. The transportation of sand particles by wind depends upon their size. Very fine particles are carried over a distance of thousands of kilometers. Comparatively, the larger and heavier particles are moved to shorter distances. The deposition of the sand carried by wind gives rise to a variety of landforms. Sand dunes. The changes in the velocity of wind lead to variations in its capacity to carry material. The velocity of wind gets reduced also due to obstacles. As a result, the sand gets deposited. Such deposition leads to the formation of sand hills. These are called sand dunes. Two main types of sand dunes are identified on the basis of their shape. Barchan due to an obstacle in the path of the wind or due to the lowering of its velocity the sand moving with it gets dropped at some places the heap of the sand over a period of time starts getting the shape of a crescent these are called barchans see figure 9.14 the barchan slope that faces the wind is gentle whereas The opposite slope is steep. Such hills can be seen in large numbers in the Great Indian Desert in Rajasthan. Safe. The word safe is Arabian language means a sword. These types of sand dunes are developed due to the deposition of sand in an elongated shape in the direction of the wind. Generally, their height is low. but they can spread over a distance of a few kilometers see figure 9.15 loess plain very fine particles of sand and silt are moved away up to thousands of kilometers by wind and are deposited far away from the deserts the material thus deposited is called loess at times such sand deposition gives rise to extensive plains the loess plain in china is formed through the deposition of very fine sand particles transported from the gobi desert its area is approximately 6.5 lakh square kilometers